Uh, please stand and join us for the invocation and followed by the pledge. I'll lead us in prayer tonight. Father God, we just invite you into this room and we ask you to give us wisdom. Lord, we just ask for safety over this entire district. And Father, I ask for your protection over every employee and every student, Lord. We just praise you and we thank you for all that you've done for us in this community. Please join me, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we're going to begin with approval of the minutes, and I am on the right agenda tonight. <laughs> Today is March 21st, so we're going to ask for approval of the minutes of the Glades County School Board regular, le, regular meeting of March 7th, 2024. So Motion. Okay. Second. All right, which one wants it? Chief All right, we'll say Ms. Pierce motioned and Ms. Clement second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. All right, next item 2.2, .2, approved minutes of the Glades County School Board Policy Workshop, March 7, 2024 at 11 a.m. Motion. Motion by Ms. Clement. Second. Second by Ms. Allen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 3.1. Recognition of Government Finance Professionals Week in Glades County, March 18th through the 22nd, 2024. Okay. Over spring break, we were um, asked to participate, um, our finance department, um, on, it's an email from Tasha Morgan, who is a finance director here at Glades County. And it says, on behalf of Clerk Simmons and myself, I would like to thank you for being in attendance today to recognize the wonderful finance staff that work behind the scenes to keep our offices in this county running smoothly. And they, although we were on spring break and many of our staff was not able to attend, I do see um, two of them here. Um, there's both of them. So if Dana and Dawn would please stand up. Um, it Glades County, um, Government Finance Professional Week is March 18th through the 22nd, and I'll be providing you with a proclamation that they sent out. Um, these two ladies um, make sure that we get paid. They make sure that our finances are where they need to be. They answer a million questions. They get checks going. They do just everything and anything to do with money, and they are very hardworking, and I don't know what we would do without them. So. Thank you very much for your service to our district. Um, and Dawn is Johnny on the spot. When you email her with a question, um, you will get it back immediately. And, and, and I ask lots of questions, and she's very patient with me, and I appreciate you, John, very much. And, and Dana also, she um, is always helpful and always pleasant. You never have to you know, worry about upsetting her. She's always going to make sure the job gets done. So we are awesome. very blessed to have her in our district. appreciate both of them very much. Yes. Dawn's the one that I bother when I have a question. And <laughs> like Crystal said, she's always gracious. And no matter what she's doing, she drops it and answers my questions. And you, I just thank you so much, Dawn, for that. Well, I love Dawn, but I'm telling you, Dana. Oh <laughs> I just haven't had a chance to get Dana yet, but I, I will. Have you gotten a paycheck? I have. Then you will know that. Dana. She cashes everything. I'll call you and have you explain my paycheck oh, yeah. and why I'm not getting more. Oh. <laughs> that, that was a part of the question. I, I, I 
actually think that's the governor. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> you'll, you'll appreciate it when you retire. <laughs> Thank you very much. We Thanks appreciate so much. your whole department as well. Absolutely. Yeah, because somebody's got to like yeah. numbers. Yeah. So. yeah. It's not me. <laughs> All right, we're going to move on to public comment section, item 4.1. I'm going to read uh, our little note here. Welcome to the public comment on agenda items segment of our meeting. There will be another chance for general public comments further in the meeting. These forums allow the community to engage with the school board on matters concerning our education system. Your insights are vital to our educational decisions. As we proceed to this segment, I would like to outline some important expectations to ensure that an orderly and constructive meeting about the business of the board occurs. All speakers should have submitted a completed comment card before this segment, segment and given to Jackie Smith. Do we have any, Jackie? Okay, so I'm not gonna read the rest, but thank you very much. All right, so we're gonna move to, uh, let's see, approve proposed amendments, item 5.1 to the agenda. Did we have an amendment? I believe we did. Yes. All right, so we're, I'll make a motion to uh, add the amendment to the agenda. Second. All right. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. We'll move to the consent agenda. Are there any items that anyone would like to pull from the consent agenda? 6.7. Okay. 6.7. Any others? Okay, so we'll look for a motion to approve consent excluding 6.7. So moved. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Allen. Second. Second by Ms. Clement. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll move to item 6.7. Approval to change Glades County School Board regular meeting from April 4. 2024 at 6 p.m. to April 11, 2024 at 6 p.m. Ms. Clement. Yes, ma'am. On the 11th, I will be out of state at a conference, so I just wanted to make sure that we would have. Or, mm -hmm. I'll be here. I'll be here. I plan to be here. But the only thing is, I have that as a 9 o'clock meeting. I did too. I did too. And I don't know if that should go in and on the, motion. Yes, that's my fault. That should be a 9 a.m. meeting. Okay, so, so we're it's changing be on the April fourth, nine, 9 a.m. to April eleventh, nine a.m. Okay. Right. Okay, so <laughs> Let me make sure I have it at nine a.m. because I put it on my calendar for April eleventh at six. Yeah. So, so it, it should, should be, be the, should be nine. Should be the okay. Nine Both of them were a.m.s. Okay. All right, so in the motion, let's correct the times, okay? Make a motion to approve the, the change to Blades County School Board regular meeting from April 4th, 2024 at 9 a.m. to April 11th at 9 a.m. Perfect. Second. Second by Ms. Prowant. Motion was by Ms. Allen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, let's see. So now we're going to move down to action agenda item 7.1 approval of Glades County Commission letter of support request. Um, I asked Dr. Barfield to put this on the agenda for us. So Dr. Barfield is it okay with you if I explain what I, why I wanted it. So um, and the reason I'm not asking for a motion in second before we discuss is because I'm not ready for that. <laughs> I just want to advise you guys what's going on and give you a heads up uh, because we're not ready yet for an approval of a letter. But uh, what it is is Commissioner uh, Whitten approached me and asked if I would ask you all for a letter of support for a county resolution that they're working on. They are, uh, their attorney has it now. They're talking about placing a moratorium on water reservoirs in Glades County. So when he asked me about that, you know, we got into the whole discussion about the payment in lieu of taxes, which is what we get for these um, 
things. So I made two phone calls, one to Lori Ward, one our uh, property appraiser, and one to Gail Jones, our tax collector, and got a real education on PILT payments and how it's all calculated. And it's very confusing and it's very detailed and complicated how they calculate what we get in lieu of taxes. And the one interesting thing I learned is it doesn't increase over time. Whereas if you did an assessment on a piece of property at each year, it would more than likely go up. Once your PILT is calculated, it stays the same. And so, and a lot of times they just take a little piece out of a parcel. And so it's very complicated trying to figure out how much is paying PILT and how much is still being taxed at the regular rate of that property. And so every year a different piece will fluctuate the amount that you get, according to Gail. And so anyway, it, it was very, very interesting. And thank you, Dawn, because when she was discussing all that and she told me the number of properties that we received the PILT, I thought, oh my gosh, we've had a lot of turnover in that department. Just hope and pray we're getting it. And so Dawn verified for me that we do get our PILT payments from South Florida Water Management, um, I'm sorry, the prison, yeah, and, and one more is like this Florida Trust or something. So, and do you remember what the amount was, Dawn? $103,000. Okay. Oh, good for you, good for you. <laughs> so, you know, that's a substantial amount of money, and if that amount could be increasing gradually each year, that would really be good, you know, instead of maybe being less the next year, which it sometimes is. So I want to understand all that a little better before I formulate a letter. And then after studying it with them, I thought, you know, maybe, maybe our legislators could help us to work on the formula for the PILT payments so that maybe that's where the fix needs to be instead of, we know the reservoirs are coming there, you know, we're not going to stop that. And, so anyway, that's the issue. It was brought up yesterday at the EDC meeting. Um, Mr. Commissioner Whitten did ask the EDC to write a letter of support. I know he's asked all the elected officials in the county to, to write a letter and everybody's just kind of waiting on the resolution from the county. So I did start a draft, but I'm sure it'll take a lot of changes before it's ready to submit to you all. So be thinking about that and how you feel about that and if you think that's something that we even need to involve ourselves with. I think it needs to be automatic with the government doing it for us. I think it needs to be reformulated. Well, I don't understand how the county has authority to put a moratorium on something that's the other part of the government doing it. Aren't the reservoirs governmental? Well, some, this is what, um, Gail was explaining to me, and it's different. Like, if South Florida Water Management purchases the property, uh -huh. then we go to PILT. But if the landowner leases to them, then the landowner is still liable, or whoever leases it is liable for the payment, whether it's called PILT or it's regular tax assessment. But that's where it gets really sticky, because in some of the places the landowner themselves still own the land, but water management has cr built and created the reservoir on their land. And they're making major money, so the landowner needs to pay. And then, <laughs> and then like, you're right, and then they're saying that some of that property during the dry season, the landowner is using, you know, raising mm -hmm. cattle and stuff. So it, it's a very complex, mm -hmm. complicated but they formula. Still the rent, whether they landowner. We're looking to do it, so that's why yeah. I, I am so And I know you have a lot of knowledge on it, Patty, so you'll be you'll be very helpful for us. They're making so much money, it's crazy. And nothing's changed in their operations whatsoever. I, I think it would be great if you would call Tony and have a conversation with him, because I think you could help him, you know. Because there were landowners at the EDC meeting yesterday that, you know, their hair kind of came up a little bit we, when well, this came up. we haven't done up. it yet, so but, so, but I but I see what everybody else is doing and how much money they're making. Yeah. And their operation has not changed. They still right. have their cattle. They, they don't have to take the cattle off the land or anything. So anyway, it's a very political issue as well. So I just, I just want you guys to know that that's being talked about in the county and all that. So I do not want a motion <laughs> well, for that. Well, there's a whole bunch of that already in, in the county. Yeah. 
There is. Right on my ranch as well. But mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of my cousins. All right, any other questions or comments about that item? If not, we'll move on to uh, the amended agenda item 8.1, approval of additional travel expenses for April of 2024. Um, so this actually was, um, I apologize for this being late on the agenda. Um, I was approached, Glades County um, is the only district in the state of Florida that was be, have been awarded this grant. It's a $100,000 um, grant for um, basically farm to food, um, cafeterias utilizing local farmers and lo local beef. Um, so myself, um, Mr. Wilson is actually presenting at it um, because when we receive the $100,000, then he also gets to present at the conference and Rhonda Perry will also be going um, as well. So the three of us will go out and um, it's a two day, quick trip but it'll be definitely worth our our trip because it's a great opportunity to um, to pick up a nice check and bring it home and utilize it in our cafeterias awesome where is it at our it cafeteria? is in st. Louis okay oh mm. <laughs> so and and it's all paid for by the grant we don't have any expense 100% okay. great I want to go <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Did we have a motion? I'm sorry, I got caught up in the story. Okay, so we need a motion to approve that. Motion. Ms. Clement, motion. Ms. Allen, second. Any discussion, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll move to item 9.1, general public comments. Okay. All right, Janice Brown. Ms. Brown, if you'd please come up and speak into the microphone, please. Ms. Brown is here to talk to us about the Glades Education Foundation field trips. The Education Foundation was fortunate in the last couple of years to have received a grant uh, that allowed us uh, for college and career readiness that allowed us to take students on field trips to colleges and universities and for career fairs. Um, that grant has expired now. But that, those field trips and the career fair were very important for our students to get more knowledge about what's available for them and to be able to visit the colleges and the technical schools. Uh, I am asking that the school district um, provide those opportunities, um, the transportation, and if you're generous, the lunches to go with it but I'm asking for um, approximately $1,000 each year for three field trips. And if you want to be generous and include the lunches, uh, another 450 for each trip would make it approximately 2,400 for those trips. 2,400 total? 1,400. You said 1,000 the first time, so. Uh, 1,000 for the transportation uh -huh. for the trips. And another four fifty each trip. Okay. For it. so that would be thirteen fifty added to it. So if my math is right. Twenty four hundred. Yeah. So twenty three seventy. Twenty four hundred total would do three trips and include food. Should be lunch. Okay. Calculating forty five students at ten dollars each, and the average cost of the trips that we've done with the buses through our transportation department. So. College and, career, college and career readiness. So there's three right. Uh -huh. I asked Ms. Brown to come in and present tonight, okay. and that way for next board meeting, I could make a um, input under action. Awesome. And, and so. Over the last couple of years, we've visited South Florida State College. Uh, we've been to the career fair at FSW and did the field to campus tour at the same time. We've been to uh, Fort Myers Technical School this year at GCU. So those are the ones that we've been to most recently. And you were funded for this current school year, correct? Yeah, so we you're talking about the past year. three years, technically. Right. But the grants have expired, so that's why I'm asking the school board to include, we used to do it. include mm -hmm. that. So we, we yes. Awesome. Yes, we, this year's been taken care of. 
So you'll bring that to us as an action item. Next time, yes, ma'am. And, and notice I said approximately because it varies depending on who's driving and what the pay rate is, the distance. So if you round it all up together, say approximately 2500 If they happen to, happen to use a veteran driver, it's a lot more expensive. So <laughs> we don't have a choice. Sometimes that's the only one available. Right. Right. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Brown, because the, the, those trips are vital. They really are. They're very important. And they are. But a lot of the students have never visited a college yes. campus, and they do not know yeah. what to expect. They're great. I, I fully support those trips. So. Okay. And there may be some grant money that might help us, right, with that? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right, next on the agenda is the superintendent's report, item 10.1. I love my new place. Yeah, I love it too. Because <laughs> I have a long list and you may cover oh, it. Oh, great. Like great. Me. Can't wait. <laughs> okay, um, I want to start out um, Chief Factor, um, where the Glades Public Safety gave, donated um, 12 boxes of double Narcan. 150 people die a day of uh, fentanyl overdose. Um, I personally have lost two family members to fentanyl overdoses. Um, and I just want to really give him and his group a huge shout out because um, this, this is a lifesaver. And um, I don't, you know, I pray to God that we never have to use it. But if we do, um, they're going to have, each school is going to get three. Um, and then also our SROs also have access to, to these, but um, these are also going to be in our um, clinics. So, um, you know, this supposedly if someone is having a fentanyl overdose um, and this is, it's a double, so it sh you put it up inside the nostril and you shoot it and hopefully it will work to, to save their lives. But like I said, 150 people a, a day, that's, that's a lot. And so... Um, once again, Chief Factor and the Public Health, uh, Public Safety, um, Angie and her group, just amazing. Um, so I want to also give a shout out to Tara Main. I received an email. It's, it's not often that I receive an email um, from the Department of Education that truly makes me smile. Um, <laughs> this is um, an email that um, says, it says Tara, and this is from the Department of Education. Tara, believe it or not, the world does not rotate because of hardworking intelligence or money. It rotates because people like you have grit, determination, and a good attitude which keeps it moving. Thank you for sharing the audit report and for providing revised documentation for Clades County. It has truly been a pleasure working with you to solve this issue. Have a wonderful evening, in Department of Education. Wow. And so, um, you know, Tara's not here tonight, but she is, she is doing an amazing job, and she's on top of her game and gets stuff done. And that's good that we're being known for making sure that things are corrected. And so, um, I'd like to recognize um, Lindsay Boyles. Lindsay, if you could step forward. Um, Lindsay was hired today, or not today, she was hired as the supervisor of technology. Today was her first day on the job, and um, of course she has been working for us for a year. She did, had an interview. Um, her interview was, I believe, yesterday and was offered the position. Um, the interview committee, um, which was an associo, and Mr. Gressa said that she did outstanding in her interview, and uh, they offered her the position. So we are blessed that we have that. Thank you. We love you. <laughs> um, I've already spoke about the trip to St. Louis with Mr. Um, Wilson and Ms. Perry, and I'm, I'm really excited about that because anytime we get $100,000, it's a good day. Dr. Parfield, does that mean Perry Farms is kind of working with us on that? or They probably will. Okay. We're, we're actually going to see because it involves um, it involves local farmers and local um, ranchers. So we're kind of we're involving uh, Ms. Perry because okay. um, in the grant it involved, you could take the third person and mm -hmm. we felt that she would be a great representative yeah. because of her, mm -hmm. um, her knowledge of the industry. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So so you are going to be getting um, to a survey, and I'm going to read it to you. 
Um, this was done about an hour ago, so um, I would have given you a copy of this, but there's going to be a public survey sent out and a staff survey. So you will get the staff survey, but uh, a public survey will go out on inter the internet as well as it will go to all the community um, Facebook pages. It will go out to all of our, um, our parents and community members. It says, Faculty and staff of the Glades County School District, the Glades County Sheriff's Department, in partnership with the Glades County School District, is requesting your input on the Guardian Program. <coughs> this program is designed to arm additional school staff and or volunteers in our local schools as we aim to make informed decisions that reflect the needs and values of our community. We are reaching out to you for your valuable input. Your feedback will help us make informed decisions on how to proceed with this initiative effectively. We invite you to participate in a survey designed to gather your thoughts and opinions regarding the Guardian program. Your responses will remain confidential and will be instrumental in guiding our next steps. Thank you in advance for taking the time to share your insights with us. Your, in, your input is invaluable and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for your support and participation. And there are questions, there are very, there's very few, it says, are you in favor of the Guardian program being implemented in the Glades County School District? Yes or no? Are you in favor of arming only administrative staff who do not directly supervise students? Yes or no? Are you in favor of arming classroom teachers? Yes or no? Are you in favor of arming both administrative staff and classroom teachers? Yes or no? Are you in favor of utilizing community volunteers? Yes or no? As an admit as an administrator or non-classroom teacher, would you be interested in participating in the Guardian program? Yes or no? And finally, as a classroom teacher, would you be interested in participating in the Guardian program? Yes or no? The public survey that's going out basically is, says the same thing. Are you in favor of the Guardian program being implemented in Glades County? Yes or no? Are you in favor of only or of arming only administrative staff who do not directly supervise students? Yes or no. Are you in favor of arming classroom teachers? Yes or no. Are you in favor of arming both administrative staff and classroom teachers? Yes or no. And then are you in favor of utilizing community volunteers? Yes or no. Um, we were informed that the, the Sheriff's Department was approved for the um, Guardian after they filled out an application and they were approved for an $88,000 um, award, which would provide us with the Guardian program. Um, do we know how much it's going to cost us? I do not. I do not know. I do not. Know. I just know that we were given the $88,000, or he was. Or the sheriff's department, I'm saying. Ma'am. He didn't give us a, a quote. No, ma'am. So th I'm sure that's just a partial payment because it's going to be more than that. Um, but I think the next step was to decide what, you know, if that's something our staff will support, if they would be interested, and then if our community would support it. So that's where we are with that. Um, but you will be getting it as a, as a staff member. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you have, you know, if you could share it on your, your Facebook page, we're going to send it out through our, our district um, to try to get as many community members. Uh, and then it ends in two weeks. The survey will end in two weeks, and then I'll be able to provide you, and it'll be a public, um, you know, public can see what the results are as well. Do you know if that grant automatically renews once you get approved? I do not know. Because that would, I would, we would I would imagine it does. I thought they said it was a hundred thousand dollar grant that you had to reapply for, mm -hmm. from what so, I understood. From, from my understanding, I mean, he today we were told it was eighty-eight thousand dollars is what they received. So I don't know if they. Okay. I just want to know if it's automatically renewable because if we were to start any program with a grant that is only going to last one year, but then we're committed to sustain it, you know what I mean? Like I think I the first year. And I could be wrong. I think the first year it would be more substantial because you have to do training because there's 140, out, 140 hours, I believe. And they're 44 hours. hours of training. Um, and we get, so we could train up to 10 people is kind of what um, I was informed. 
Um, now we would have to have, they would have to pass a background check, they would have to pass a drug screening, a psychological, they'd have to go through the gun course. I mean, it's, there, it's very yeah, substantial. Um, and for our staff, and for our staff, that would be, in order to get it done, would be, you know, over the summer as well. That they, you don't get, they wouldn't get paid for that. Now they do get a, a one-time stipend, I believe, of $500. Um, but if someone is interested in it, if this is something that they want to, to you know, <coughs> get more information about, then we would have to have a um, an informational meeting for those staff members that are interested. You said it was a one-time stipend of what? Five hundred dollars. And so, like I said, you will be getting that, and tomorrow morning those will go out. So yesterday and the day before, the 9th, March 19th and March 20th, I was able to conduct interviews for seniors. And uh, I know I've talked about it already um, prior to this meeting, but I just want to say that it was probably the best two days of, um, it's just been amazing. They, um, the seniors are beyond articulate and sharing their stories. And, and I was only able to spend about 15 minutes with each senior but I could have spent hours with each senior and the ones that you think are going to be real quiet were not <laughs> they were talkative and um, just asking them questions um, there was a series of questions we asked them about the same questions some it kind of varied just because if there was some that answered the questions more um, with like one or two words and I tried to keep them going I explained to the seniors that they were not I was not judging I was not grading them they were not getting scored the donors were not scoring them but that we were doing this to get um to get the donors to know them and um, i've been been contacted by many of the donors and by many people in the community that said i want to see those videos i want to see you know what it was like so um i think that we probably the, the scholarship committee probably needs to be thinking about that because as i said you know there was a lot of, there was some personal information shared, but it was just amazing. Um, the kids were so complimentary to the school district, to the, the scholarship organization, and just hearing about their passion for what journey they've been on. And many of the kids have been here since kindergarten, and to hear them speak about their teachers that they've had and that, what the impact they had is, was amazing. Um, we had a total of 35 interviews. Um, uh, this is something that to me I think is more exciting than anything. Um, we have about 10 students that are planning to go into the military this year, which is a very large group. Um, I don't know, you know, if I know there's 10 that are thinking about it. Um, and then we have 17 students that are going to be graduating with their AA degrees. Wow. Awesome. So that is, that is something that... How many that, students in our senior class? Ma'am? How many students? I want to say there's about 60. Okay. So that is the what? Okay. And the only other thing that, that um, I have that I need to bring to your attention, um, we have a couple, uh, I've had someone reach out to me, the um, Republican Party. Um, concerning renting the auditorium and I know that we at our next workshop tonight we voted on um, we talked about looking at the fees but they they were asking they'd like to conduct a, um, a debate and if they could how that process would work if we could waive some of the fees or do you how do you want to work that do you want to wait till the workshop to discuss that do you know I know that you and Mr. Gresses were going to look and see exactly what the costs were. Mm -hmm. You were looking at the toilet paper and everything mm -hmm. else. Did you come up with an amount? So we've got got something started, but we, I mean, it's, I'm going to have you here with me. Okay. I was just what date are they looking at? They wanted to do it here in the next couple of weeks, but, I mean, the month of April. It, from what I understood, it, it's our, our, our rally. It'll be rally that is normally held. Correct. Okay. So the workshop that we scheduled for the 28th, is just what we 
what was on our agenda was it was for athletic funding. No, ma'am, there's there's actually there two counting? separate ones. Right. The one on the, the 28th was just athletics. Yeah. The one on the 28th is the athletics. Correct. Yes. What's the date of the other one? The other one April is um, April, April 11th. Nope, 16th. That's 16th. Yeah. I'm yeah. And when did they and want to do it prior to that time? I don't know. I'm sure they would want to probably advertise it, and um, the April the the um, April 16th workshop. We're going to be discussing the strategic plan um, policies V24 N2 class size auditorium rental and open enrollment. So that's a that's a pretty packed. And we add it to the workshop for the 28th. The one that I just activated. Uh -huh. I said, you mean the one I just activated? <laughs> it has to be activated seven days in advance. <laughs> yeah, I can amend it, I suppose. We got you, Jackie. I cannot with my efficiency. <laughs> yes. Uh, so okay. we're going to add it to. That's what you get for being ahead. You know? So we're only going to discuss that one policy. The rest of the policies will be on the 16th. Mm -hmm. Which one? Which day is the auditorium? The 28th. <laughs> That's it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Awesome. I'm sure, because I'm sure there's going to be more, <laughs> and so I'll hold off. Okay. Yeah, I have a couple questions for you. Okay. So, I actually have a lot of stuff tonight. Um, do y'all want me to go first or do you want to go yeah. first? I'm getting yeah, it on. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> I want to thank you and Lindsay for doing those interviews. Thank you, Lindsay. The video is going to be great. I, and I, I really appreciate it. Thank you, Jackie. Appreciate y'all doing that. It's a great, a great thing that we did, that you all did. So um, I did say earlier that I attended the EDC meeting on our behalf yesterday, and I just wanted to update you all with some of the things uh, that they reported on that I thought you might be interested in. Um, one, there is a glass company from Miami looking to possibly come to America's Gateway out here. So that was good news. The Airglades Airport, they said, is moving along, still on track, hoping that that's moving quickly. Um, another thing they talked about, and I called Mr. Gresseth prior to the meeting about this, so I'm wondering if he might want to. Did you go to that meeting? I did. Okay, great. So at the, um, at the EDC meeting, they talked about a meeting they were holding tonight at the library with the Brownsfield group. And they asked me, was our property, uh, the B&B property, had it been released, inspected and released for underground contaminants? And I had no idea. So um, I did call um, Mr. Gresseth and ask him if he might go to that meeting tonight and just find out more about it and, and see if they had, you know, because apparently they have money that they have available to use to help with toxic chemical underground cleanup. So first, Dr. Barfield, do you know anything about that? Okay, well, you, maybe you could tell us, and then I'd like to hear what they said at the meeting tonight, if you don't mind. Well, just that I know what Mr. Greston and I talked about prior to him attending the meeting, and what I've heard about them, that they do um, dispose of you know, gas pumps and, and such. Um, we are going to be paving the B&B parking lot, the, well, the old B&B parking lot, but I kind of, I, I haven't spoken to him because he had gone to the meeting when this meeting started. So I guess I kind of need to speak to him first or hear what he has to say. Okay. Because if, if it's something that we want to do, then we need to hold off on getting that, that do paid. Do you recall in the, with our realtor and anything, any mm -hmm. discussion of that? Jenny, do you remember what it's called when we, when they had to provide us with the, about the, the, um, the tanks? Do you know what I'm talking about? I don't know what you're talking about. It know. was in, like, as I remember, it, it there was, it, something had to be signed off like by an the environmental assessment. It, yes. Or 
I can get a copy of that if I don't know if that's who if the Browns is it Brownsville Brownsfield Field. Brownsfield yeah, if they would need that but okay. I do know before we purchased it we were we signed we had them sign an environmental because it was a gas station correct there's but to my knowledge and it, and it either was removed or it was enclosed there was there was something that had to be done yeah, by the owner yeah I can't imagine that it was just left there they took the pumps and that right. was it i can't yeah. imagine that that happened well, i remember i was concerned when we, when we were purchasing it mm -hmm. that i was afraid that you were going to pay more to clean it up mm -hmm. than the price of the mm -hmm. land so what'd you find out oh. mr Gresson? so uh, i'm still learning some things but um, some of the things they talked about was this cleanup of underground um, materials that might be might be have left years ago or whatever but uh, I've already filled out a form for, uh, for us to uh, have them take a look at that property. We want to look at the, the storage tanks that are, that are there, there's any contamination there. And also, uh, I'm concerned about a septic system that I believe probably was there. Uh, I say that because there's a nice hump on the southwest section of that, that area, which I'm sure that's probably a drain field. Um, I also talked to them about uh, the new property that we're going to be using for the school. Uh, they actually have a half million dollar grant for the Glades area to look at commercial properties to try and get some things cleaned up. They, uh, they'll do a phase one where they'll, they'll see if there is something there, phase two, which will go a little deeper. As far as the phase three and actually the cleanup part, uh, that's that's something I have to learn more about because they're talking about that they would give a commercial per, uh, company coming in uh, tax credits in order to do the cleanup. But there, but I believe that there is a way that um, we could pay for the cleanup and then receive money back for that. But uh, I, I plan on tomorrow uh, sending that those forms off. They said it takes about 30 days, but they're looking for parcels in the county to, uh, to really take a look at and see if they can clean those up. Thank you so much for yes. going. Yes. We're going to hold off on paving yes. that until we yes. go through this process. Yes, yes. Mr. Boyles isn't here, but um, when they, when the company, the ceiling company went back to take a look at the property and cleaned up some of the stuff, they found that a lot of the, a lot of the parking lot of is in crumbling condition and they would have to clean all that out and really instead of just coating it they're going to have to repaint a lot of it so we're looking at coming back and with a whole new price probably because you know, they're going to probably take most of that paving out in order to repave it yeah it's in bad shape yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it just can't be coated sure but if they're going to be doing this there's which it kind of worked out in our favor because if that's something that we're going to be able to get through brownfield then we'll just it you know we can all do it at, all at once yep yeah. and that'll be all done i mean what i explained it i said you know we're going to be using it for a parking lot but i would think if, if a grocery store came and said they want to buy that property and they went to a grocery store there we might consider doing that and we want to have that property ready to go when that happens so. the Publix. Yes. They have neighborhood publics, as I'm telling you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Down there in Pompano, there's three within five miles of each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and thank you so much for going. And um, sorry, I didn't even get to tell you, Dr. Barfield. I was called him about something else. And anyway, he um, told me. Good, I knew he would. Um, so that was, you know, good information that by attending that meeting that we found out. And so there is, I think, I think having a seat at that table can be good at times for us. Um, Ms. Fisher did report at that meeting that the RFPs have gone out for the impact fee study for the county and she's going to include the school in that. Um, they reported that the Glades Electric broadband, if I understood correctly, has had over a thousand people sign up and they did discuss how that could help a lot of our students in areas of the county where they haven't had internet access so that was good news as well not to interrupt you Ms. Um, mm -hmm. drake but i several students actually spoke about that about the fact that yesterday in their interviews that they during covid they got behind or 
you know, when there's when there's assignments that are online that they really struggle because they don't have internet access at their homes. <laughs> and hearing them talk about it was different. You know, it, it yeah. was really heart wrenching. Yeah. So I'm excited for the that to come through. Okay. Um. So moving on with the other part of the EDC meeting. Um, couple things. Number one, they have two things that they want us to consider. And then I'll talk about the issue with the uh, settlement agreement. So number one, they want us to rescind the eviction notice letter that we sent to them. They Number two, they want us to rescind the motion to litigate for eminent domain because it was pointed out that that's in our minutes and that leaves the door wide open at any time for that to happen and they felt uncomfortable with that door being opened they so i just want to share that with you to chew on so they also bless you as you all have been informed uh, mr mckinley created a partial settlement agreement and they were unhappy with the agreement so um, they shared a lot of their unhappiness with me at the meeting and I listened and I respectfully asked them to give all their concerns to their attorney and have him make revisions in the contract that met their approval and then send it back to us. I did want to ask Ms. Proant if she would comment because the, in that discussion, you know, she represented us at the meeting, so we don't really know exactly what happened there. Um, and Dr. Barfield and Jackie was at the meeting taking notes. Um, their impression of the agreement was that it did not accurately reflect the discussion that was held in the meeting. And so um, I wanted Ms. Prolon, if she would, to address that because the statement was made that when Ms. Prolon in our meeting gave the recap about it, that she said it exactly correctly. And so when I read the agreement, it sounded the same to me too, but the things they're upset with are minute, you know, what I call wordsmithing, you know, little changes. But I just wanted the public, and personally, I want to hear what Ms. Prolon thought about it. So I'm going to put her on the spot. Ms. Prolon, we're in the sunshine. Can you tell us uh, what you sure. think? So obviously, I don't remember word for word what I said. That meeting that you're referring to was March 7th. Um, but I'm pretty sure I know what I said. Um, in my recap of the meeting, and Mr. Gressa and Dr. Barfield and Jackie and I were in that meeting, but I gave the recap at the March 7th meeting. I think I started off by saying that one of my points that I wanted to address was the 99-year lease. And right away, we were informed by um, Mr. Kaus, who led the, the meeting from the EDC standpoint, uh, that that was non-negotiable, that we could just forget that. So I had three other points. Um, we talked about the access of the 50 feet, that they would grant us the use of that 50 feet, that we would be responsible for um, may, um, doing whatever needs to be done for the drainage, for the ditch, and, and that sort of thing. But but. That would be one thing that they would agree to, was to give us use of that 50 feet. Um, we discussed later in the meeting, and I'll just add it now, that there would need to be a legal description done of the portion of the property that would be still under the lease terms. Um, we all agreed that they would be responsible for insurance and I think we set a minimum of one million dollars which is in that um, document that 
uh, Mr. McKinley's office drew up. I don't know if you did it personally or I did it my own self. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we, we had a discussion about the time of use of the property. I said, I thought two weeks before and two weeks after was reasonable. Um, they took exception to that, but I think we settled on 30 days prior to Chalanitka and 30 days after. And that we, we did discuss the fact that the school district students or what have you would want to have access to that property for our use the rest of the year with the exception of those 60 days we would not use it at all and we discussed the fact that they sometimes allow the um, kids the this um, rec kids to use that for practice field or whatever we said we had no problem with that I think the final agreement was that we would coordinate with them the use of that property so if we wanted to use it we would let them know they would let us know we would we would work together on that so in the end it was basically summarized that we would have access to the 50 feet they would carry the insurance and they would have exclusive usage of it 30 days prior and 30 days after and we would coordinate with them the use the rest of the year so when you read the contract did you see things in there that were not discussed no i felt like the settlement agreement that mr mckinley's office prepared summarized exactly what we decided in that meeting what about they took exception to the beginning of the document where we laid out our ish contentions about the term etc they didn't want that mentioned in there is that customary that we i mean do we have to have that there as i understood the business deal we weren't going to resolve every possible issue between us we right. carved out certain issues that we were going to settle on mm -hmm. and issues we were going to reserve okay that was so that's okay. what I and, and I think that's part of the contention. They don't want us to reserve. <laughs> they want us to roll over on everything. They Isn't want that us to, bizarre? to <laughs> make it as short and simple and sweet as possible, like the one they gave to us, the first one, which I know you didn't like. You didn't Very think it was in our best interest. Very much vehement, okay? We don't need to go into that right now. No, I'm I understand. I'm not squawking about the business terms. I'm squawking about the draftsmanship. Right. No bueno. Right. So their attorney should be contacting you with their proposed changes. I, I do want to say one other thing, maybe two other things. <laughs> maybe three. Um, you know, first of all, I, I think they have a, an issue with this 30 days before and 30 days after. And if they do, my comment to that is, it has been stated several times in different meetings that the purpose of the lease was to create a permanent home for Chalanitka. And if 60 days is not enough to create a permanent home for Chalanitka, you know, I take exception to that. I, th I think we're, we're giving them a, a permanent home. And a comment was made in the meeting when, when we summarized it at the end, the 50 feet, the insurance, and the, um, the time constraint, the 30 days before and 30 days after, a comment was made that, you know, we're giving you all of this, what are we getting out of it? And what I wanted to say is you're getting the use of our property for 60 days a year. I, I didn't, but that's how I feel. I feel like that they're, they're almost treating that like it's their property and they're letting us get a little bit of use out of it, whereas it really is our property. 
and it's up to us to coordinate with them. I don't want to hurt Chalonica, but my goodness, there's 12 months in the year. Let's use that property the way it can be used to benefit both entities for the rest of the year. Right. Okay. So, any other comments on that before we move on? Yeah. I okay. have a comment on that. Go ahead. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this has gone on long enough, and they need to, this next to go around, we got to, we got to do something. We got to, we either going to accept that or we're not going to accept it. We're going to move forward like we already said we were because, I mean, how much longer are we going to hash this out? It's in, we can't go on indefinitely. That's how I feel about it. It's, we've already spent too much time on it, and they can sit there and say, oh, it was only since October. No, it wasn't. The first person that came to your office was a long time ago. And so that's how I feel about it. That's so, it. with their request of rescinding the ev eviction notice, how, do, how would you move forward with that? It doesn't mean anything. I, if the board wanted to do it, and they asked me to write a letter that says they've, they've directed me to rescind the, the eviction order, here it is. But that remember, that's an action the board can do and undo in successive meetings. Right. It doesn't mean anything. It's a feel-good, feel-bad gesture. Just like rescinding the eminent domain. That's feel-good, feel-bad. It doesn't resolve that's, anything. Right. right. Well, we can do it. Personally, I feel like we should wait until we get a signed agreement that everybody's exactly. happy with. Yeah, the, the, the less away. energy we put into it <laughs> as time goes right. by, well, that seems to be well, that, that's more prudent. Well, that's what's supposed to happen, right? It's in their field. They're, they're yes. supposed to, they're going to do it now and send it to yes. us. And, and if, we, that, if we could have it by the next meeting, that would be awesome. You, I'm not writing it. I'm not the draft. I know, person. but I, maybe you could. Is, is there possibly a way for the board members to know before those letters go to those people that, hey, just FYI, this has been sent out so that we're not getting phone calls again without knowing what letter? You got a phone call? Explain yes. what letter you mean, Ms. The settlement agreement that was emailed out. I'm, I'm stuck on the phone call because I haven't received any phone call and I'm the superintendent, so I'm kind of surprised. Once I got done with it and received all the comments back from the administrator, administrative staff, and we were ready to go, present it to the board, I sent a courtesy copy to their attorney, like, a, like, like people with good manners do. But like us. But the ball is the, in their court The now. superintendent is in charge of that, really. Yeah. They, so they they have, we could get a letter whenever things like that are sent out. That's what that letter is. It was just That's if I get the letter. That's draft. It's not the, it's not the final product. But like, just a, hey, by the way, this was sent out, how we get the notification. She hasn't everything. sent anything sent that we haven't seen. I think, I think what Ms. Clement's talking about is Mr. McKinley sent the agreement to Dr. Barfield. Dr. Barfield sent it to Ms. Prolant and the rest of the committee that were at the meeting. Then EDC members sent it to me and Ms. Clement to say, hey, just want to make sure you got a copy of this. You know, so then I asked Dr. Barfield to send it to you two so that everybody would see the, the thing. And it was just, I understand Dr. Barfield's, you know, she was sending it to the people that were in the room to look at you know i mean that makes sense to me but you have to understand that the public you know mr mckinley does statute give us the board the authority to negotiate lease agreements and contracts or is that the superintendent that's definitely an operation what do you mean by negotiate the way the, the way the system works is the administration takes care of the details of something like that and presents a finished document, at least in the mind of administration, to the board for its consideration. It's not take it or leave it, but it should be thought, thought out from the administrative perspective before it goes to the board. The board's not supposed to be... We don't create the document. Yeah, you don't create the document. You don't really make the business deal. The business deal is created by administration and submitted to you not for a rubber stamp, but you know, consideration. Which so is there's an operational see. part and a legislative. Uh -oh. So she's supposed to, she, he or she, whoever the superintendent is, 
is your negotiator with a contract right. to, with a with a lease agreement and get with the, a land purchase even though those are our lane to put the final and you have discretion it isn't the, taken or leave it but she's right. supposed to put it together in a way that at least makes sense to the superintendent right. okay for you to consider and do violence to as you see fit okay so there's people in our community that think that is our role yeah. and they're saying you're not doing your job Miss Drake because you're letting the superintendent do it and this is your job and you should be doing it so I just want clarification I want to do what I'm supposed to do you know I've gone round and round about my lane yes and I want to stay in my lane to the best of my ability but I also do not want to shirk my responsibility you the, yes you can have it all you could beat up the <laughs> superintendent in private and then you can stay in your lane in public if that's the way you want to do it I mean I think I but it's supposed the way the process is supposed to work is administration does its thing okay. and submits that to the board with the stamp of the legal eagle on there right remember let's not lose let me remind you this all started with crappy drafting right really Okay, sorry. I mean, and 40, you, 50 and years you have ago. Asked us, you have sent us letters to approve and not, and, or not, or change, massage, do whatever let's, we wanted to do before anything's ever gone out. Let's take a breath here. You know, you can always blame the attorney. That's what I'm here for. That's right. Big, <laughs> slow moving <laughs> target. Think about it, right? That's right, part of my job. Stupid attorney did it again. Yes. Damn. What are we going to do about that? So that's my lane. Yeah, we, we tell him what we want, and then he goes and drafts it, and then we read it, and if we don't like it, we can say, "Can you please change Try again. that?" But we're not we're not attorneys. We're not creating the documents. Yes, I'm aware of that. Right. Miss Clement, did you have any other comments? Okay. Um. Okay. Are we done with that topic? Because I have a couple more things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. So we're waiting to get there their agreement back in our court and hopefully it'll be all good and tidy and we can do it and we can get this behind us hopefully real quick I just want to clarify because I want to make sure that I'm doing what the board wants me to do so Ms. Clemens you asked could I notify you when there's a drug tell me what you're wanting so whenever something touchy like this that we know like okay you're fixing to get calls just give us a heads up like you have in the past hey by the way today I'll I was like because I try to I mean I really have I, I do make a huge effort to do that and I, I, I thought I was doing that and I don't think you had any idea that people were not gonna like the document I, <laughs> listen, I, <laughs> that's right because the document said exactly what, what was said, said in the meeting, meeting and those people were in that meeting and they heard exactly the same things that that we heard and their own secretary who came separately of my secretary took notes you asked her in front of the edc mm -hmm. was that on there yes you said you went through each mm -hmm. bu um, bulleted point everything that their secretary had is what was in that in that document there so was there was some confusion though and i think it's just because i went to her later in private and asked her and, and you know and there were some things that she felt were you know i think it's perspective everybody hears a conversation and maybe you hear it differently right you take away something different from the conversation i don't think it was intentional on anyone's part i just think that it's a touchy situation i think it's very touchy and you know, today I received a call from Wink TV, and they want to come over and do an interview. They want to they want to see the 50 feet, and I asked them to please hold off because I don't want to ignite this. But I can tell you from the community members that have come and they've seen what we're talking about. We we it's 50 feet. We need to get this settled, and the EDC needs to understand we're not wanting to destroy anything. We want to work, we're not going to change this. So I don't understand. I just want this to be, I want us to utilize 50 feet of our own property. And I want to go to Chalanica next year and enjoy Chalanica. And I want to park at the new school's parking lot eventually. <laughs> I mean, this is, this is just crazy. And 
you know, we're, we're just, we're putting off something that is so good for our kids, and I don't understand it. And, you know, I'm like, I'm where Jenny is, and I'm, I'm, I think that we need to get it back. We need to see what their attorney sends us back, and then we're done. We, we, we get one more shot at this, and we're done. I'm just, I don't want to, I don't want to continue this. This is crazy. But we have other options, and that's what we'll utilize if we need to. And I think that we should keep everything in place. I agree. Okay. I'm not resending anything. Anybody have any other comment on that before we move ahead? Okay. So, um, Dr. Barfield. Yes. Do we have a program that would help our alternative certification teachers get certified? Like cover their class cost, reimbursement, or anything. I know we have a program for our parents going to get their bachelors. Mm -hmm. We have a program for people getting their masters. Mm -hmm. But do we have anything for that? those folks that have a bachelors, they need those four or five extra classes to reimburse for those classes? I am not sure of that. Would you check on that for me? Because we've got people and they're worried about the cost they want to keep their job they love working here but they're they're asking do you have that and i honestly could not answer their question i felt really bad but mm -hmm. I, I know we have those other ones so i'm hoping we have that and i know we've been very helpful mm -hmm. i know we've had a couple of people teachers that have come to us and have asked and i know we've been you know um there's been different um universities that have offered scholarships and stuff so I know um, Gabby's department has you know has offered some different guidance um, but I can definitely check and we'll send that out okay thank you very you're much welcome. you're welcome because we want to keep them if they're Absol good absolutely you know and back in the day heck did that and mm -hmm. I, I don't I guess they don't do that anymore but um, anyway we need to do we, what we can we did it too we, we did something it was kind of like grow your own and we helped the, the students go to college become mm -hmm. instructors and then come back mm -hmm. and they signed a contract with us mm -hmm. and they left they took the money and they left before they filled their contract yeah i think so they changed we that didn't we didn't we, we put changed it, in some it to years. now they get it yeah. three years yeah, yeah. And, and i will say that a lot of our our teachers that are certified in like um like they have business classes so that when they put their certification through Department of Education will say, well, they can be certified in business education. They, you know, they're on a temporary business certification. Um, you know, they, they're they really good. Our teachers have been really good about keeping up with what they need and asking for, for assistance with that. So. Okay. So I just, I will, somebody I can asked find me out. and I didn't know and I was embarrassed that I didn't know the answer. So, and I think our employees need to know if we do have that program, we need to let them know so they can. Um, I had a great idea. <laughs> I ran it by Mr. Gresseth today. I think he thinks I'm crazy, but you know, there's a new um, trend in taking old school buses and making them into RVs. Have you all seen those? Mm -hmm. Like they really fix them up and they're really nice. And I thought we should do something with these old buses that we have to take out of service. We have to remove the engine. So I was thinking about, since you love the whole school bus theme, wouldn't it be neat to like donate one to Bimbo to the migrant camp, Muse to the migrant camps, maybe Ortona Community Center, Buckhead Community Center, put an internet access point in there, put some books in there and make it a little Glades County on provided wheels. <laughs> wheels on the bus. I don't know. I just wanted us to think about that because I think it would be. And then I thought, Mr. Gresseth, after I told you that idea, I got another great idea. What about a little classroom or an office in a school bus? I think it'd be really cute. So before we scrap the school buses, I think we could should consider maybe doing something creative with them. Is there a um, is there a statue or anything that we once we get rid of them is there certain things that we can do with them we're supposed to scrap we're but, um, I 
mean, you, 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 you go ahead. You know, when, when, when you're talking about, you know, sticking a bus into a community and making it a, a library, it sounds like a great idea, but who's going to maintain it? There's library. And now it doesn't have an engine, so it's not going to be air conditioned. So during the summer, when it gets to be 140 degrees in there because the windows are up, I mean, what's that going to do to the books that are, that are in there? Um, I mean, just, I, I think it's a great idea, but it's just moving forward with the, with the second part of it. Right. Who's going to maintain it? How's yeah. it going to be maintained? Not us. Not us. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then is, it end up, is it just going to end up being an eyesore mm -hmm. in a community and it, and it says Blaze County Schools on the side? Right. But you said, you have the, he reminded me today that since the engine's out, I was like, what are they going to do if they get tired of it? He reminded me you could pull them with a wrecker. Right. If they got tired of it, they could get rid of it and scrap it. I don't know. I can't see it being looking that appealing. Like I think of the Ortona Community Center. It's so nice and everything. And then, I mean, yeah, it's cool, but yeah, it don't look it might good. be an eyesore. And yeah. you would just we would just say, do y'all want it? If you want it, yeah. yeah. If you don't, you don't. But I think in the migrant camps, I think they would really like That's even if you do anything but put the internet hub in there so they can get internet at their house. They wouldn't even have to go in the bus. I don't know. You wouldn't need a bus to do that. But. It's too bad we can't sell them yeah. for somebody that and wants a bus. I guess my question would be, again, with the maintenance part of it, what's to, what's to keep someone from just moving in there and they just mm -hmm. they yeah. sleep in there? Oh, no. Yeah, because there's already somebody living in there. Make, so. make it a house. Make it a house. Make it a tiny, tiny house. Tiny yeah. houses are all the rage. Make it well, all the Lights County has a rule you have to have 800 square feet if you're in the living area. So that's not going to work. Okay, the other, double -decker. The other thing I just fun. was wondering why our new school update missed the agenda. Was that? Oh, let's land with the super agenda. It's really I know we did. Is there anything? I forgot. That's okay, Jackie. For this new school that we need to hear about. Sure. I had a, we had a meeting today where the people from Highland Electric, along with our architect, um, also our engineer, and several oh, also Mr. Wiseman, who's our, our um, construction manager, uh, we we had discussions about the bus garage, which is going to be just on the south side of this building. Uh, I'm bringing everyone together so that they can they kind of see what the plans are and who's doing what. Um, with the, uh, they're all, they are all on the same page right now as far as the bus garage being built here behind us. Um, and we just are kind of moving, moving the bus garage and where it's going to be. We've talked about how the electrical is going to go in and, and uh, where, the, where the electric buses are going to be stored and where they're going to be charged. Um, we, we talked about uh, starting work on that in June, um, and Mr. Wiseman's company, they would start by taking out the, the grass areas that are in the parking lot right now and filling those in. We can actually start with the, with the electrical chargers um, and get those in place so that when the buses get here in August, they're ready to charge and ready to go. Uh, we also talked about the the bus area that we're going to use at West Glades. Uh, we're planning on, we're, we're, the first choice that I had was to actually build a, a bus lot on the north side of the school lot side of the fence where the soccer field is. But um, it, it, it was looking like it was going to cost a little bit too much. I mean, we were looking at about $150,000 to do that. And so option two is to actually park where the buses currently park at West Glade, so uh, we're going to do that, but we're going to, we're looking to expand that parking area. We're going to, we're looking at taking down the fence and moving out about 40 feet to the east of where they're being parked right now, which is by the, uh, the gymnasium. And there's plenty of room there to do that. The, the cost is going to be much less, and so it's, it's going to be a good situation. So. And the architect and our construction company, they are going to be working with us on that project as well so that we can make sure and get that done and have it ready for when the bus is coming to office. As far as the school itself, uh, we, we, haven't, we, didn't, we haven't received any new information over the last couple of weeks. I know that our, our permit application is in the South Florida Water Management, so we're just waiting to see what's going to happen there. So it's been there 
four weeks? About four weeks now. I know that several people have said, hey, I, I think I know some people that I can try and get it accelerated, so I'm hoping that somebody knows somebody who knows somebody. Help, help, us, help us with that, you know? It's who you know, right? Sometimes it is. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Sure. Appreciate it. All right, Ms. Clement, do you have some comments? That's all I have. What? Yeah. It was only a whole page. I know. Oh. Oh, thank gosh. Ms. Clement. Um, mine's just very quick. I seen tomorrow that there's going to be dinner at the softball fields of some amazing food. <coughs> I don't know if any of y'all have seen it, but it's looked like it was fried chicken and collard greens for $10 a plate. So I'm not sure what your plans are tomorrow night, but I heard that at the softball field tomorrow, there's going to be fried chicken and collard greens for $10. I heard that too. So I'm just saying it sounds amazing, and that's some of my favorite food right there. Mm -hmm. Um this weekend, some of our clubs are participating at the Riverside Market on the river. So if you are in town, hope, make, hope you can make plans to come and attend. And also, <coughs> I've been seeing so much on Facebook from Sky Sluter with the FBL, FBLA mm -hmm. and the kids and what they participated in. I don't know what it is about these kids, but just seeing them going in different environments and thriving and dressing up. I mean, they look like total different kids when they're out there. It makes me so excited and want to, you know, maybe brush my hair, dress up a little bit more each day. But I'm so proud of everything that they're doing and how far they've come since they started. Just seeing their improvements and you know, they said they didn't win, but the, as a group, they all won because they participated and got to do something that they're not used to doing. So kudos to Sky. I am so proud of seeing what she's doing with the FBLA. Um, I also seen that HOSA has a basket going around, so if you want to support those kids there, that's all I know of at the moment. So if you know of anything else that you can support our kids with, please just make sure you're out and helping our community thrive. I just, Kim, you said, um, talked about uh, Ms. Sluter and um, HOSA and FBLA. When the kids were talking yesterday, and of course, the ones that came in, some of them that came in, they were I mean, sharp dressed or they were, you know, their, their clothes were pressed and clean. And um, many of them, not just one or two, and make, not just four or five, like we're talking about <coughs> teens, discussed the impact that being in FBLA and HOSA have had in their lives. And several of them spoke about, you know, the school board allowing them to go out on the trip and that, yes, they learned a lot at the convention, but many of them spoke about the fact that that was the first time they'd ever been out of the state of Florida and was riding on a plane. And just the, the experience and what it meant to them, you know, and we take so much for granted, you know, that of what we've done and seen and what opportunities we had growing up maybe and there was one student in particular that talked about um you know I won't go into the, i'd like for you all to watch the videos because i think and when you do just get ready to cry because you will you will cry we cried all one day just cried but um he spoke about the fact that you know for him the opportunity was it meant everything and then when we told them that we were going to allow them to travel to the Texas, that it it was a life-changing event for him. And it was like, he just sat there and um, it was It was incredible. the pure terror that they got stuck places too. <laughs> well, I said, did you, I, in one of the interviews, I said, did the turbulence, because one of them actually has changed what he wants to do, he wants to go into tourism and hospitality. and. He said the flying, and, and I said the turbulence. Oh, I loved it. It was like a roller coaster. Oh, I was like, oh, I'm glad I wasn't on that roller coaster ride with you. But um, I, I just, I, want, I know, you know, our decisions that we make are often, you know, you all think it's just you know, given permission, but it's so much more. And and I agree when they they come and they they're dressed, and it's just it's it's just a statement. That's all I have. For tonight. Oh, and I think the gender reveal was tonight, right? The what? It is. Actually, it's I was boy. looking. Oh. It's a boy. Oh. It's yeah. Oh, it's, it's a boy. It's a boy. Did they hit a ball? Yeah. Did they hit a ball? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay. Her daughter is a junior, and she is She's having a baby. baby. They were having a, at the game, right? Yes. 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 For a fundraiser game. Okay, Ms. Pierce, do you have anything tonight? The date of the awards program and scholarships to be presented. Um, You're going to get a calendar from me. I'm yes. working on that like I did for you last year where it tells you I, when everything is. Do you, I, it, do you know I think the it's date? April 30th. Yeah, I'm pretty it's sure it's the it 30th. Is. <clears throat> yes, 6 p.m. April 30th. Yep. And it's going to be yep. auditorium. Okay. auditorium. It is on your school calendar. I'm going to print out a calendar for you like I did last year for April when we think between this and your FSBA. There's all kinds of things going mm -hmm. in. So I'm going to do you a calendar. Thank you, Jack. You're welcome. It's a good thing to give to. <laughs> I'm sorry that I have to be. No, it's a visual. I remember yeah, well, from I this time of the year, there's a lot going well, on. Well, I'm, I'm, I was just talking about the, the scholarships for the memorial scholarships. It's a way for me to keep Cutter alive. And we appreciate your year after year contribution, Patty. It means a lot. You've helped a lot of kids get to college with that contribution. Anyway, that's that's coming up. Yep. That thirtieth. Okay, Miss Allen. I have nothing else after my two bit uh, play and speech. <laughs> Miss Prowant. I don't have anything other than what I already said. Okay. All right. With that, the meeting adjourned.